Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Michael Barrison and Lauren Knarik? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Michael Barrison was born sometime around 1965 and was raised in upstate New York. From an early age, he became interested in horses. He developed a specific interest in the equestrian sport of dressage. This is where people train horses how to dance. At first, this may seem like an unusual behavior for a horse, like are they teaching horses ballroom dancing, ballet, or tap dancing? As it turns out, the dance moves are fairly basic, nothing that complex. Even still, the horses do all the work, so calling it a sport seems generous. Either way, Michael was very good at training dancing horses. He became famous for training riders in the Olympics and other high-profile competitions. Amazingly, the horse dancing business was so good that in the late 1990s, Michael became the co-owner of a farm called Hawthorne Hill in Long Valley, New Jersey. This area qualified as a one-horse town, despite it having many horses. At this farm, Michael would train people how to ride the dancing horses. Many horses were boarded at the farm. A number of people lived there too, including Michael's romantic partner, Mary Haskins Gray, her two children, and various other trainees and farm workers from time to time. In March of 2018, a horse enthusiast named Lauren Knarik met Michael at some type of horse-related event in Florida. She made a deal with him where he would train her at the farm in New Jersey. Lauren wanted to become good enough at horse dancing to compete in the Olympics. She wanted to be a world-class rider. Lauren was able to afford this because her father was a wealthy attorney in Livingston, New Jersey. Over a year later, in May of 2019, Lauren and her boyfriend, Robert Goodwin, moved to the farm in New Jersey. They lived in a white farmhouse on the property, which was divided into two living spaces. Michael, his girlfriend Mary, and her children lived in the same house. Lauren boarded five horses at the farm. Two of them were boarded for $5,000 a month total, so $2,500 each, and the other three were boarded in exchange for Robert doing work around the farm. According to a lawsuit that Michael would later file against the police in New Jersey, Lauren had a troubling history. She was not allowed to reside with her family due to domestic conflict, like her family did not want her in the same area. She had once been addicted to heroin. She had an extensive criminal history, which included criminal assault, harassment, and stalking. She had made false reports to government agencies about people she thought of as enemies, and she was involved in at least one incident involving her discharging a firearm out of anger. Robert also had a troubled past, again, according to the lawsuit. He had a history of heroin use, stalking, and harassment. The living arrangement involving Lauren and Robert staying in the White Farmhouse was supposed to be temporary. Michael explained to Lauren that due to some water damage in the farmhouse, she would not be able to live there long term. The lawsuit indicated that Lauren's father threatened Michael with abuse of legal process and litigation for the purposes of forcing Michael to permit Lauren to live at the farm. When Michael permitted Lauren and Robert to live there, he was unaware of their past behaviors. There was a lot of tension between Lauren and Michael. She did not seem to be happy with the amount of personal training that she was receiving from Michael. Eventually, Lauren started harassing and threatening Michael, his girlfriend, and others. She made a number of posts on social media starting in July 2019, which were disturbing in nature. Here are a few examples. She posted this analogy based on the game of chess, where Mary was the queen, and Mary must be sacrificed to protect Michael, who was the king. She posted a message saying, It's about time to possibly go to war. Anyone who repeatedly kicks a resting beast will eventually wake her up. I'm going to tell you some stories that you would not believe. I'm going to call the world. Lauren posted a message saying that everyone should be worried. 
She was not responsible for anything her other personalities do when they are threatened. Lauren claimed that Michael was racist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, and that he was bullying her. She made it seem as though she was the victim. But workers on the farm said that Michael did not bully Lauren. They said that Lauren was the problem, not Michael. Lauren would allegedly dress in black and sneak around the woods at night. People on the farm were becoming concerned. They didn't know what she was capable of. In order to catch Michael saying something offensive, Lauren placed audio recording devices in various places around the farm. Michael and Mary moved out of the white farmhouse into a stable that was about a quarter mile away. It was still on the farm property. Michael said that he asked Lauren to leave many times, but she refused. It's always suspicious when somebody has a chance to leave New Jersey, and they don't take it. On July 31, 2019, at about 8 p.m., Michael called 911. He reported that he had been verbally assaulted by Lauren. Lauren was threatening, harassing, and stalking Michael and others on the farm. He was afraid for his safety and the safety of others. The police responded, but they did not take any action. On August 1, at about 6 p.m., Michael called the police again, but experienced the same results. On August 3, at about 9 p.m., Michael called the police for a third time. He made it clear that he believed Lauren had a weapon. He informed the police about Lauren's criminal history, and he told them about the audio recording devices Lauren had planted at various places around the farm. The police decided not to take action. Lauren continued to harass Michael. She made a complaint to a watchdog group called Safe Sport. In this complaint, Lauren said that Michael was harming Mary's children, which was not true. At some point around this time, Michael obtained a Ruger LC9S from one of his clients. This is a semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. He stored the gun in a safe in his office. This takes me to the timeline of the incident. On August 7, 2019, Lauren posted a message on Facebook which read, All my moves against them have been planned for months. Presumably, the pronoun them is referring to Michael and Mary. The message also said, Everything I've done to them so far has been child's play. This appears to be a not-so-subtle hint that Lauren was going to become more harmful. Not long after this, a caseworker from the New Jersey Division of Child Protection and Permanency arrived at the farm to investigate the claims that Lauren had made to Safe Sport. The complaints were she alleged that Michael was harming children. The caseworker didn't find any children on the farm because none were there at that time. When Mary and the caseworker were in Michael's office, Michael interrupted, kissed Mary, and told them both to wait outside. He retrieved the Ruger pistol from the safe in his office and drove to the White farmhouse. What happened next has been disputed, but a few things are clear. Warren was shot twice in the chest with the Ruger LC9S. Both Robert and Lauren physically struck Michael repeatedly, and Michael was bitten by Lauren's dog. There is no way to know for certain the order in which these events occurred. Lauren called 911 at 2.13 p.m. She told the operator, I've been shot in the heart. Michael Barrison shot me. Please help, please help. Police officers arrived at the scene. Both Lauren and Michael were taken to the hospital. Both of them recovered. Michael was charged with two counts of attempted murder. The state said that he tried to kill both Lauren and Robert. In March of 2022, Michael went to trial. The state argued that Michael premeditated the shooting. Michael's defense argued that he had been temporarily insane. Lauren had used a number of tactics common with narcissists, like gaslighting, to harass and threaten Michael. Michael was found not guilty by reason of insanity. He was sent to a mental health facility where he will be periodically evaluated. Presumably, he will be released someday. Now moving to my analysis. Was Michael actually guilty? Many people look at this case and think if a person brings a gun to a scene and another person ends up being shot in the chest twice, the person who brought the gun is probably guilty of some type of crime. Other people view this case differently. To them, Lauren created a dangerous situation through her narcissistic and manipulative behavior. Michael was not capable of handling all that stress he became temporarily insane due to fear and anxiety. They believe the jury 
was correct by voting not guilty by reason of insanity. Michael did not testify, therefore the jury was never able to hear the story straight from the horse's mouth. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Michael was guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. Michael was clearly unhappy with the behavior of Lauren and Robert. He obtained a firearm a few days before the shooting. He drove to the house where Lauren and Robert were living right after being confronted by a caseworker. Michael knew that Lauren had made the complaint, which caused the caseworker to visit. Lauren ended up being shot twice in the chest with the pistol that Michael brought. Michael claimed that he did not remember retrieving the Ruger pistol or shooting Lauren. His memory in every other area seems to be fine. His memory loss appears to be convenient. Michael appeared to be distressed during much of the trial, as if he was putting on a show for the jury. Not long after the verdict, his condition appeared to improve dramatically. Moving to the exculpatory factors, on the stand, Lauren admitted that she had a plan to destroy Michael and his business. It's clear that both Lauren and Robert were engaging in a campaign to harass and stalk Michael. Lauren repeatedly made false claims about Michael, accusing him of horrible offenses, including those involving children. She made it seem as though she was going to become more destructive. According to a lawsuit Michael filed, Lauren had a criminal history consistent with her harassment of Michael. Lauren would sneak around the woods at night. Lauren talked about disabling Michael's surveillance cameras as if she was trying to hide something. Lauren admitted to planting audio recording devices around the farm. She testified that she did not record private conversations in Michael's office, but the evidence suggests otherwise. Lauren lied about being told to leave the farm. She claimed that she had no other place to board her horses, but this was not true. Lauren filed a complaint with the town about a faulty dryer in one of the stables. She could have simply unplugged the dryer she was trying to get Michael in trouble. Lauren lied about searching her phone for the number for the Division of Family Services. She said that she never searched for that number, but data from her phone reveal that she searched for the number twice on two different days. She claimed that another person on the farm had taken her phone. Perhaps they made these searches. Right before the shooting on August 7, Robert turned off the camera, which would have captured the incident. Lauren and Robert said that Michael fired the Ruger pistol three times. This established the idea that Robert was also the victim of an attempted murder. Only two cases were recovered at the scene. Lauren and Robert changed their stories a few times. They provided inconsistent descriptions about the scene of the shooting. For example, the locations where their cell phones were recovered by the police do not match their stories. Both before and after the shooting, Lauren was pursuing civil action against Michael. She wanted Michael to pony up. Robert testified that Michael was not angry at the time of the shooting. This supports the idea that Michael was not motivated by anger. During Lauren's testimony, she was caught in several lies and had a staggering amount of memory loss. She avoided admitting any bad behavior. To such an extent, it made her look dishonest. For example, in her original story, Lauren talked about disappearing at one point. Later, she said that she disappeared in her mind. When Michael's defense attorney asked Lauren if she said something in a social media post, she would say things like, probably, and I don't recall. Even when her exact words were shown to her, Lauren would equivocate. The state believed the story that Lauren and Robert provided about the shooting, and of course Michael said he did not remember what happened. But as I mentioned, the order of the events is not clear. It's possible that Lauren and Robert attacked Michael first, and Michael defended himself. The police did not do a gunshot residue test on anybody involved, and, thanks to Robert, there was no video of the incident. As far as Michael's insanity defense, there are exculpatory items here as well. Michael was diagnosed with delusional disorder. He had no history of violence before the shooting, and... Anyone placed under as much stress as Michael was would be at risk to have a psychotic episode. When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Michael was guilty? No. I do not think he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and I do not think he was guilty in reality. I think the argument about insanity is putting the cart before the horse. I'm not convinced that Michael's actions were not self-defense. 
if it could be proven that Michael was the shooter, and he probably was, I would still go with not guilty by reason of insanity. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Lauren Kanarik had a history of irritating and harassing people. She appeared to be selfish, envious, insecure, grandiose, and had a sense of entitlement. She didn't appear to have any respect for the rights of other people. She was highly vindictive and loved to play the victim. Lauren would gaslight people, like try to make them believe that they were the problem. She would provoke people into taking actions against her and then respond dramatically. And Lauren frequently filed false complaints. For some reason, Lauren believed that she had a lot of talent riding horses that dance. But the reality was a horse of another color. Lauren was a good rider, but she was not at the Olympic level. She would get on her high horse and try to convince people otherwise. When Lauren talked to Michael about training her, he thought it would be a great opportunity to make some money. Perhaps he didn't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. When he started training Lauren, he realized that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. She just didn't have the talent to be a champion. Michael started having other people train Lauren. He had backed the wrong horse. As Lauren's behavior became increasingly threatening and generally disturbing, Michael tried to kick her off of the property, but this was like closing the barn door after the horse has bolted. Lauren had already dug in her heels and was not going to leave. Michael realized that he had been deceived by a Trojan horse. Lauren continued her campaign of harassment. Michael called the police. He tried to do the right thing, but they looked at Lauren and thought, she's no war horse. On the day of the shooting, Michael retrieved the pistol and went to the white farmhouse. His intent was to force Lauren and Robert to leave the property. A physical altercation ensued. During the struggle, Michael shot Lauren twice in the chest. His intent was to kill her in order to protect himself. His fear and frustration reached a point where he was no longer fully connected to reality. Lauren survived being shot and was now able to play the victim even more. When the case went to trial, Lauren found out the hard way that society frowns on behavior like hers. The jury was not going to send Michael to prison for the shooting. They viewed Lauren as a narcissistic, vindictive, and sadistic individual who provoked the confrontation. Now moving to my final thoughts. This case exemplifies how a person's mental health can be damaged by words. Physical violence was not needed to push Michael over the edge. Law enforcement has historically dismissed claims of emotional manipulation. They tend to value evidence of physical violence more so than evidence of mental violence. This case could have been avoided if law enforcement had an increased quantity of horse sense. Those are my thoughts on the case of Michael Barrison and Lauren Canaric. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as a horse that can dance the Macarena. Thanks for watching.